this law, I think, is too wide. Uh, it does not really take account of the, the sufficiently the rights of the unborn. I do think the law has to change. Uh, I said so at election time. I, we recognize after considering the, the current law and the subcommittee of the party made its own evaluation. Uh, a majority of, those, of the people on that subcommittee happen to be young women. They made the evaluation, made a recommendation to the party. We recognize that the law has to change. We said so at election time, but it's not this law. We don't think uh, th th this, this is the law that should be adopted. And, and on, on balance and listening to all the arguments, I have decided to vote no at, uh, at the referendum on Thursday. Do you have a good idea of what a law would look like drafted more narrowly to allow only abortions in uh, specific circumstances, uh, rape, incest and fatal fetal abnormality? Does such a law exist? Well, that takes us back to the debate we had at election time where we had uh, adopted the view that if elected to government we would pass uh, a law specifically only on the exceptions. I think my own view is that it is possible. There are laws in other uh, countries around the world that are uh, around those, those exceptions, but that's not what we're talking about on Thursday. On Thursday we have a choice to whether, to whether we vote yes or no, whether we support the proposed law or the commencement of it or, or not. The, the proposed law goes much further than just the exceptional circumstances that in our view would make the law constitutionally compliant. We think the law needs to change, or I, I think the law, the law needs to change to make it certain constitutionally compliant. But it, the, the proposed law on Thursday goes much further than that. It will allow uh, abortions um, fairly freely up to 12 weeks. It also allows uh, abortions after 12 weeks in certain defined circumstances, more restricted circumstances. You have said that it's something of a cop-out to refer to the fact that Spain allows abortions and that women from Gibraltar can access them um, a as a reason uh, to justify introducing a law that permits them in Gibraltar. Why is that? Well, what I'm, what I'm saying simply is that you can't decide whether to have a law in Gibraltar just because there's a law in Spain. Because that would then mean that we should have all the laws that Spain has because, because we're just next to it. But no, nobody's so. saying that. But what I'm asking you about is the reality of women choosing to access abortions but having to do so away from Gibraltar. Well, I understand that. And, and it may be, look, if, if Gibraltar votes yes on, on Thursday, it doesn't necessarily mean that those people will elect to have their abortions here, they may go to Spain. So that reality that you talk about, that reality will, will, will be there, whatever the outcome is on Thursday. My point is that you've got to evaluate whether you want to pass, commence this law uh, for yourself as a, as a community. And in doing so, you've got to balance the issues as I've indicated. But don't you think that should the Yes campaign win, uh, and the law is enacted that we would see the necessary mental health services follow to prepare for uh, the procedure and also to support her after it? Well, I have no confidence that, that the mental health services or support services will be there. I mean, one of the things that I think there is common ground about is that there needs to be much more support services for, for women who are uh, you know, in pregnancy, and, and it's not just about uh, mental health issues, but, it, but general economic issues. I think there needs to be much more support. I mean, we, we I've put forward a motion to have a cross-party uh, effort on mental health services. Everything that I hear from people who come to see me uh, suggests that there is a real crisis in quality of continuity of care in mental health services. In your statement you've cast yourself as a progressive politician, but there'll be a sizable number of people watching this who think that by voting no, you are denying a woman her bodily autonomy, and therefore you are the opposite of progressive. Well, I, I don't think things can be pigeonholed in that way. I've tried to explain in my statement, and I invite people to read it and make their own mind up. I think the most progressive thing that you do when you balance laws that are difficult uh, is to consider the weakest uh, uh, in the equation and to consider whose rights uh, need to be balanced. Now, I recognize w women have rights in, in, in this very difficult, agonizing exercise. So does the unborn. I ask myself the question repeatedly, 
who is the weakest in that equation? Are we protecting the voiceless, the underrepresented, the the unborn who cannot speak for 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 itself? I mean, the, it's a living being at some point, um, and uh, there is no doubt about that. So so I make that judgment. This is not an easy question. I'm not going to come on TV like uh, Mr. Picardo did yesterday to say that it's that it's uh, in his usual way overselling the argument, saying that it's a clear-cut question and that it's undoubtedly the right thing to do to vote yes. Look, I'm not going to come on TV to say that because because I don't believe it's an easy question. If it were easy, we wouldn't be having this very divisive debate, divisive among friends and families. We all have people on both sides of the equation. This is not an easy question. But my judgment is, when balancing these rights, is that this law goes too far and it doesn't adequately consider the rights of the weakest in this equation, that is the unborn. I think the biggest issue has been the misrepresentation, the successive misrepresentations on the issue. There was a misrepresentation in the command paper about what the draft law was about and in the referendum uh, campaign. You've, you've seen the Chief Minister intervene uh, and make, in my view, what has been uh, misrepresentation after misrepresentation of what the existing law does and what the current proposal uh, does. And, uh, and, and that, I think, it has been probably the, the worst part of it. But to say, for example, as uh, the Chief Minister has said um, a couple of times now, that the current law, it's the current law that allows abortions and not the proposed law. I mean, I think that is one of the wildest comments that we have heard because if, if, uh, if, if the current law uh, allows abortions, then why are we having the referendum?